Hey, hey, what's the big idea you- Well, 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 I gotta admit, it took us a while to find you. But after all these years, we have finally caught the video game demo freeloader. Hey, you got the wrong guy, I swear it wasn't me! I don't know, man. Based on this evidence, it looks like you've been clocking in some mad hours on these bad boys alone. I mean, 10k hours? Whoa. Say, let's make a deal. If you review Persona 5 right now, we can forget this ever happened, and I'll let you go. Or, you can spill the beans, and maybe I'll let you go. So what do you say? Well, I guess it's story time. So I can remember it like it was yesterday. Ah, in-store video game demos. It may seem primitive nowadays where you can just download one on your console and move on, but that's where the magic in the experience was. You'd stand at a gaming kiosk behind glass and get to play whatever new thing was coming out. Even though they're no longer plentiful, I still vividly remember them. And while they sort of exist today, there's a certain magic that can't be replicated in newer consoles. So today, I want to tell you about how demos influenced my taste in gaming, what I remember from the era I grew up in, and how I got kicked out of a Walmart for essentially gaming too hard at a weak kiosk when I was like 10. That last one may be a little more exaggerated, but you'll find out soon enough. Being born in 98, it was too late for me to enjoy the quarter-pumping days of the arcades, yet I was born too early to have the convenience of mobile gaming on a smartphone, like my little brother who can play Sonic CD anytime he wants. And yes, I know the Game Boy existed, but as a kid growing up, I lived in a pretty low-income fam, so when it came to gaming, my options were pretty limited. I could wait once a month to visit my one friend who had every console known to man, or I could play the family pack band Plug and Play. Back when I was only 9, the internet was fairly niche in our community. Plus, we couldn't afford gaming magazines, so most of my gaming knowledge came from ads on TV, the school's book fair, or whatever I saw in the store. However, as time progressed, things improved slightly. My mother got multiple jobs, and one of them required us to be in a Walmart for a long time. With her busy, us kids were free to roam the store, so off to the electronics section I went. As a kid, walking through the vast aisles of video games on display were intimidating in an awe-inspiring way. You'd walk up to the controller that was probably never washed, break your neck looking upwards at a 90 degree angle, and play whatever game was there. Or wherever the last kid left off before his mother ripped him away. Keep in mind, the year was around 2006, right before the Wii came out. So I was enjoying the GameCube days. I would mostly play demos of Mario Sunshine or Sonic Riders or whatever looked fun at the time. And despite not being much of a PlayStation fan, Sly Cooper really appealed to me as a kid for some reason. Yeah, that's probably why I'm messed up today. I vividly remember playing a mini game where this turtle guy was downing a beer or something and after being accused of cheating, you had to beat up a few enemies. Then I would proceed to get stuck on a simple puzzle because I didn't know what an L2 button was at the time. Then I would look at what the Xbox had and check out whatever this Halo thing was that all the big kids would flock over to. Despite never playing a FPS game, it was interesting to say the least. Until mom saw me, ripping me away from it, telling me that I should not be looking at such violent games. Most days, I would just grab a beanbag chair from the next aisle over and just hog up whatever game was being demoed. But it was clear certain employees didn't like that and would actively try to keep us away from having any way to lounge there, even if nobody was there. Another notable thing is, as time progressed and I grew up, gaming titans such as Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft shared an aisle with distinct columns of red, blue, and green that made you pledge your allegiance to whatever console they had out. Boys would line up to choose their favorite console, thus sealing their fate for life. If I can recall correctly, there was one system on display that was making every child my age beg for. While Microsoft had the sexy Xbox 360 and Sony had their beefy PlayStation 3, Nintendo was sporting off something new, futuristic and unique. That's right, the Nintendo Wii. The Wii was a console that needed no introduction. It was a showstopper, and depending on which store you went to, you get to play something like Wii Sports, or in some rare cases, New Super Mario Bros. Wii on display. Now, I was no stranger to the New Super Mario Bros. series, so seeing the next evolution of Mario in stunning 480p with Yoshi and four-player local co-op was actually mind-blowing to me. As I noted earlier, my mother was always in the store due to work-related stuff, and nine times out of 10, we would end up going to the same Walmart that had the Wii I wanted. However, if Walmart was too packed or didn't have a good deal, we would usually end up at a Target or a Kmart, which would have their own respective demos. While I can't remember the specific day we started playing, it was definitely around Christmas when New Soup Wii came out and was being demoed at our local Walmart. After fending off a bunch of other kids hogging up the Wii kiosk, which now that I think about it, I'm just going to call it Wii-osk. 
we took in the glory of the next evolution of gaming that totally wouldn't get stale in the next few years. I vividly remember having at least a solid two hours to play, and we got most of World 1 done. I say most because we were a little too preoccupied with chucking each other off the stage for kicks and fighting other kids that were playing with us. Once mom said it was time to leave, we sadly gave up our Wiimotes to the kids around us, and we reminisced about what we did that afternoon. The following week, my brother and I returned to the Walmart to see what remained of our progress, and it was bad. Upon reaching the Wii Us, we looked in horror as someone had used up our reserve of power-ups, oh. wasted any lives we had built up, which left us with a fat 15 continues use. Determined to not lose our progress again, I backed out to the main menu and found out there were three save files. Now, while this may seem trivial and obvious to many of you, you gotta understand back in the day, this was a pretty new concept to me from a big game like this. Either way, this was a 24-hour Walmart and the game was always perpetually stuck in World 1, which technically meant hundreds of kids were all sharing the same file. So with this newfound knowledge, we started a new file and prioritized beating the game. And when it was time to leave, we made sure to exit to the menu and choose the first file as a dummy file so nobody could touch our progress. Now, when we returned a day or two later, we crossed our fingers, went to the menu, and behold, our progress was saved. This process continued for about a month or two as we slowly chipped away at the game, being careful not to let anyone mess with our game file. Now, after three months of abusing the Wii's demo, my brother and I got pretty comfortable and complacent to the point where we would just smuggle in snacks while mom did her business at the store. The day started like any other. We scouted out the electronics game aisle, made sure nobody was there, and we unloaded our epic makeshift Walmart gaming setup. This included, but was not limited to, a foldable lawn chair we took from the camping aisle display, a basic foldable aluminum chair we took from the office section, a random beanbag chair, and a few shopping carts to block off the aisle to the Wii so nobody could intrude on our gaming session. Well, I think this time we officially broke the last straw because either Walmart security or some sort of manager approached us asking where our parents were. So we did what any kid would do. I'm out of here. Somehow, we thought they wouldn't follow us if we went to the toy section, like the employees were geofenced to their location. But needless to say, we were cornered, escorted to the front of the store, and we had to wait for mom because we were causing trouble. Two weeks later, we returned and surprisingly, our progress was still safe. At this point, we were getting close to the end game and we finally made it to Bowser's Castle, the magnum opus. Sure, it took a few months just to beat one game, but the fact we did so as kids, who had no real control over when and where we were, was quite amazing. At the end of the day, we walked out of the store renewed with our lives changed forever. That was until we came back the next day to find out one of the employees had erased all the save files. Yeah. Game demos are just another form of advertising, but do they really work? I tried to get some info and held a poll on my Twitter account, and so far a majority of people agree that demos of games influenced them to buy it, or at least be interested in it. When I asked which store y'all played them in, I was surprised to see Target and GameStop, and it's kind of been interchanging, but it makes sense. When I asked anyone if they had fond memories, a majority said yes, and I'm happy to see so many of your replies. Lonely Goomba remembers using a 360 and agrees demos are mostly gone. Ken played Mario Bros. Wii with another kid and managed to beat World 2 and had a fair time, even if Luigi was robbed from him. And apparently it worked because his mother bought the game for him that day. Valiant recalls playing Star Fox Assault in a Toys R Us, and despite not knowing anything about the game, they knew it was cool because of the space stuff, and playing the multiplayer with their sister was another win for them. Berg played Arkham City in a Walmart and shares the same sentiment that a kiosk should be more common. Funky was absolutely shredding it with the Parappa PS4 demo in Target. Yotes Art managed to get a Game Boy game after playing a GameCube kiosk in Walmart. Bray has a similar experience to me where when he was a teen, he got kicked out of EB Games for only playing the Guitar Hero demo, which is honestly relatable and respectable. And there are many, many more replies like this to the tweet that just honestly shows that this kind of advertising and display is just needed. So, is it effective? I'd say so. In my opinion, it's much harder to have mom bring out her credit card to buy you online items in a game versus begging for something right then and there when you're already grocery shopping. The last story I'll share is of my uncle. He used to be a big gamer in the early 2000s, but sold his collection because he got married and was too busy to play games. However, when the pandemic hit it in 2020, and I think around 2021, he wanted something to do, and I kid you not, the 
only reason why he bought a Switch was because it had a playable demo of New Super Mario Bros. Deluxe. He said he considered PlayStation because he was mostly into action games, but when it came down to an impulse decision, he got a Switch. So what about today? After gathering info from my friends online, I have come to the conclusion that in-store video game demos are still a common occurrence, but they've been severely limited nowadays, with Nintendo being the main provider in most stores. I live on the East Coast, and sadly many of the stores I visit don't have much to offer. The PS5 was on display, and the Xbox shows up here and there, but as far as I know, Nintendo has been the main one keeping the torch going of playable demos in stores. At the end of the day, video game demos are just another form of advertising, but I find it so interesting because it's uncommon to have products on display where you can extensively try them before you buy them. It's made going out to the store a worthwhile, in my opinion. While I can see why they have been phased out due to the rise of online shopping and easy access to the internet, I feel it's important to remember this cool chunk of gaming history. And even just recently, the allure of game demos still has a strong pull. When Mario Wonder was a few weeks from launch, people demanded for a demo, and they got one in the form of a kiosk at Target, which is kind of funny, because I remember seeing people on my timeline go to Target just to play the Wonder demo. So in a way, I'm kind of happy the demo wasn't on Switch. It shows that the game still have a significant pull. What I'm getting at is nothing beats the magic of playing the real thing for yourself in a store around other people who are just as excited as you are. The impression left on me will last a lifetime and I can only hope people don't forget these unique experiences as we head to games going more and more digital into the future. So remember to value the games you have, finish that god awful backlog you own on Steam, and remember, stay- OW! Are you done rambling? So that sums up my in-store game demo experience. Uh, can I go now? <laughs> no. We're gonna save you for part two. In the meanwhile, have fun in the bottomless pit. Well, now's a good time to say thank you very much for watching the video and an even bigger thanks to all my Kofi supporters that have been helping me these last few months. I'm not gonna lie, 2024 has been off to a very rough start for me. And to get this year started, I just want to name all the wonderful people that have supported me thus far. iPod, Touch, Soul, Emma, The Blue Pixeling, Ranch, Ice Blue Starcat, Vasha, Ken, Icy QB, Nonsensical Fox, Bergnut, Bravo, Onyx, Ninja Star, Summer, Wolf Mama, Papa Boy, Miles, Juan, Two, Three, Cool Pringles, Nick Games 8, You Can't Beat B, Aki Dave, and Jay. Thank you all very much for supporting me. I'll see you all very soon in the next video. And remember, stay foxy.